Recently, we have learned about the present and past perfect tenses. Today, we will continue our grammar review by learning about the future perfect tense. If you remember from our previous videos about the perfect tenses, all of our perfect tenses refer to a time that happened or will happen before another time. In the case of the future perfect, we are referring to actions that will occur and be completed prior to another time in the future. This tense isn't used often, but it is important to understand it for when you do need to use it. The good news is that this tense is quite easy to understand and use, especially once you already understand the present and past perfect tenses. Let's start by learning how to form the future perfect tense. It should be pretty simple as we have already learned all about the past participles. If you don't remember what a past participle is, I recommend that you go back and watch that video before continuing. The future perfect tense is formed by using the future simple of the verb to have followed by the past participle. This means that regardless of whether the subject is singular or plural, you will use the formula will have plus the past participle. For example, he will have eaten. They will have completed the project by then. We will have been to all our destinations by the end of the month. Of course, we can contract the word will with the subject by dropping the WI and combining the double L sound with the previous word. For example, she'll have reached her targets by tomorrow. As we have discussed before, spoken English can sound much less formal than written English. Therefore, in spoken English, it may sound like both the word will and have are being contracted with the subject. For example, she'll have reached her targets by tomorrow. However, please realize that this is never appropriate for written English. Of course, we can also use this tense in the negative and interrogative forms. To form the negative version of the tense, place the word not between the words will and have. For example, she will not have arrived. Since the tense stays the same regardless of the subject, the formula stays will not have for all of the subjects in the negative form. As we have discussed before, we can then contract the will not portion of the sentence into won't. So you will often hear the sentence she will not have arrived, spoken as she won't have arrived, or she won't have arrived, if we are looking at the extra contraction that we just talked about. For simple interrogative sentences, we simply swap the subject with the word will, or in the case of a negative interrogative question, won't. For example, will they have completed the project on time? Or won't they have already finished their project by then? If we want to create a WH question, we simply add the question word before the word will. For example, when will you have finished reading the book? Now that we know how to form the future perfect tense, it is important to know how to use it. As I mentioned earlier, the future perfect tense is used when we want to discuss an action that will be completed before another time in the future. You can think about this as if you were able to time travel to a certain point in the future and then look back at an action that has been completed at that point, but that has not happened now before you did the time traveling. In this way, you can think about this tense like the past in the future. Usually, this is used with some kind of a time expression, which you may have noticed in the example sentences that I've given so far. These are prepositional phrases that give some sense of timeline associated with the sentence you are saying. For example, as soon as, when, from now, by then, or already. As a side note, there are situations when you can use the future perfect and simple future tenses interchangeably. This can happen because a time expression such as before or by the time is used in the simple future tense to indicate the sequence of events. For example, he will finish before you arrive. Since there are two events that must occur when using the perfect tense, you cannot use any perfect tense to simply describe an action. If you do not indicate a second time in the future, you can't use the future perfect. 
I hope that this has helped clear up any confusion on the perfect tenses, and soon we will start on the perfect continuous tenses. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video, and I'll see you next time on ESL Universe.